the verdict is so in my hands I have a Nano Flare 800 Pro or your G5. What's the difference between this the 1000Z? and this 800 Pro and which one should you get before I enter that though let's walk around the racket let's take off the cover and on the back it has like all of the different specs like it talks about how this is a frame dedicated to drives looking around the racket this is a fairly wide racket I thought this was a little thinner than the 1000Z but like when actually comparing them side by side like visually they're both about the same width 800 Pro is basically the same width and same shaft thickness as the Nano Flare 700 and then the differences are like you know in the T-shaft and the string pattern that kind of thing so you can just imagine it's like a nano flare 800 with modern tech in a 700 body the main things that I want to pay attention to guys is that like there's an apparently inclusion of copper near the bottom of the racket which is interesting because one copper is a metal so in comparison to carbon which is usually what you know or graphite which is usually what rackets are made out of these days it's quite stiff but copper is a relatively soft metal this is apparently a 22 by 22 meaning that there are 22 mains and then there are 22 crosses so typically the string pattern which correct me if I'm wrong is a 22 by 21 so the extra cross basically reduces what they're calling the interval so basically the spacing between each individual string which makes a tighter pattern which apparently helps with repulsion I just felt a really dull and mute feeling on the string like it is not fun to play with this track in the beginning I'm not a fan of this like at all one thing I do like is like I think the tension holds way better it's been a week I've pretty much used this racket like exclusively but like it's like it still sounds fairly new like it still feels fairly tight so maybe that's a plus so this having copper I want to revisit the copper is interesting because it makes it feel stiffer than it should be combined with it being already like a headlight racket and it's stiff it's just really hard to get a good timing like to learn the power time on this is very hard just using just like your hips and shoulder isn't enough you really have to like pronate and use your fingers as well to kind of effectively transfer the power I've noticed into basically every shot so even like when I do play a good shot like in terms of timing and technique and like I was loose and I tensed up right like all the basics of a proper shot right the hitting feeling just does not give you any confidence you played a good shot because it's so mute you hit it and like there's not a good ping right it doesn't feel good in the hands and, like these things you think they don't matter but when you're like playing and you're so used to having good feedback to um, let you judge the quality of a shot it like really throws you off your game it made me subconsciously change how I play because like typically with a thousand Z um, I would just play everything down right like fast drops half smashes stick smashes like even full smashes like drives if it was flat like I would just always be off on the offense because I know I could rely on the repulsion that the 1000Z gives you with this I found I was playing a lot of softer shots I was um, playing more neutral building the, the rallies longer I play attack clears as well and kind of just rely on moving the opponents around counter attacking that kind of thing which is kind of what this racket was designed for but I don't really like playing like that so of course the paint job is pretty it kind of looks like like a muted version of that turquoise nano flare 700 racket to me if you want to have like a stealth racket I think this is pretty Pretty much the most low-key racket that Yonix makes in the current lineup, right? Really from far away, it just starts to look like black. I think the last thing I'd want to talk about is the handle. I find it interesting that like the, the cone doesn't have the EB cap plus, so like that indented ridge it just has regular EB cap. So let's actually talk about my experience. So the first two hours were absolutely horrible. I was miss hitting everywhere. <laughs> The timing was off, of course, because every racket has different timing when it comes to swing and power. But also because, like I said earlier, that the string bed feels so dull and mute, I couldn't get like good feedback mm. on like if I'm hitting it correctly or not. It's supposed to shine in counter drive. It's supposed to give us consistent high velocity drives with repulsion and maneuverability. It definitely produces well. It's just like that that muted feeling just doesn't really give me confidence in in driving, right? Like sure you can play flat and I can play flat, but like I still would prefer the 1000 Z. Flashes and drops are probably the areas where I feel this lacks the most, just because like the headlight nature combined with the muted feel does not give you good confidence in where your racket is in like this three-dimensional space like I'm completely missing the shuttle the power production is just not there like sometimes I'm hitting it but the sound is off it's just a disaster drops are kind of the same way sometimes they'd be too tight sometimes they'd be too loose sometimes they'd be too fast like I just really couldn't get a, a dial in on where I wanted the drop to go right an area where I did find I enjoyed a lot better is actually the attack clears and then like the half smashes I love playing this shot particularly in mixed doubles because like 
my swing looks really fast, but then, you know, it, it's still like landing just inside the back line. I think the half smash I was doing just because like to play a full smash on this, like you really have to be positioned well. You have to be timed well. You can't really just rely on your arm. You've really got to like commit mentally, physically to produce a good shot, at least for me, at my current skill level. So when it comes to counter attacks and drives and, and blocking and that kind of thing, I think this is an area where I actually prefer this over the 1000Z simply because it does have less repulsion than the 1000Z I find. On the 1000Z, sometimes the extra repulsion does get in the way, especially if they play like a really fast drive and you're not really prepared for it. You really kind of have to like cut the shuttle or take it at an angle and try to reduce the repulsion just because if you hit it straight, it's just going to go like really far in the court. It's hard to play those tighter soft shots and that's really hard to do, especially when you're under pressure and you're playing against people that challenge you, right? I find that the muted feeling helps with tight net shots, especially more single type spinning net shots. Again, the extra repulsion from the 1000Z kind of get out of the way in there. Another surprising area I prefer this over the 1000Z is in the service situation. Less repulsion, just more stiff feelingness. I think from here, like I'm able to get those like serves that like, for example, if this is like the net, like to get those serves that kind of just like really skim and go inside the inner T, like more consistently with this than with the 1000Z. But when it comes to like power shots, you can produce some solid smashes out of this. But the thing is, it's it's so much harder for me to produce a solid smash from this compared to the 1000Z. And then the, the reward is not even that much better. I would say this is probably slightly worse power wise. And my best smashes are still better on the 1000Z. And my consistency on like even just my okay smashes are still better on the 1000Z. Straight winner for the 1000Z. So verdict, right? What is this racket for? And that is probably the hardest thing to answer because like a well-designed racket is one that has a clear racket identity. It's one that you pick up and you can understand who it's for and why it was made. Let's look at the rackets I've reviewed in the past, right? 88D Pro, rear doubles, 88S Pro, front doubles, the 100ZZ, that was, you know, for relentless attack. The 800 Pro, I really struggled to put it in a category. It felt like an inferior 1000Z, right? The verdict is, I guess, Honestly, I would pass on this racket, right? A lot of people, they claim that they prefer the 800 Pro simply because it's a more easier to use racket. It's more consistent and it's easier for them to use. But they said on their good days, they would perform better on the 1000Z. If this review feels all over the place, it's because this is just truly a hard racket to review. If you have any questions or concerns about this racket, feel free to drop any, any questions in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Um, but yeah, 